Okay, moving on to the next team whose draft we will be going over today, and that will be Pete Carroll and his Seattle Seahawks. And before I talk about their draft and what uh, exactly they did, I just wanted to say I am very high on the Seattle Seahawks team going into this 2020 season. I think Russell Wilson has a chance to win MVP this season, as he almost did last season. I love uh, some of the pieces on defense. I think their offensive line is getting better. I love Pete Carroll as a coach. And even though they do play in a very tough division, I think Seattle is going to be very good. And they have... Before the draft, at least, I thought they had a real shot uh, at a roster that could win a Super Bowl. But at the same time, when I look at the Seahawks draft, I got to be honest, I didn't love it for many reasons. I'll start off with their first round pick, Jordan Brooks, linebacker uh, from Texas Tech. And don't get me wrong, I love Jordan Brooks as a player. I think he'll be very good. But at the same time, a couple problems. One, if Seattle liked him, fine, but I didn't really value him as a first round pick, to, to tell you the truth. Um... I think he could be pretty solid. I saw Brooks as a player that maybe in the back end of the first round or early in the second round could have been a very nice value pick, but I think where Seattle took him, especially when you consider, and this is the bigger issue, there are other holes on this team, especially defensive line or offensive line and secondary. If I was Seattle, I would have taken a little more focus on that. Um, we all know that Seattle's offensive line has really been struggling for the last couple of years. They cut DJ Fluker the other day. They have BJ Finney right now as their starting center. I think that could be a problem. Uh, they have Cedric o Ogboehi as their starting right tackle. That could be a big problem. And besides Dwayne, Bra uh, Dwayne Brown and Ethan Posich, um, I don't really think there is much to like with the Seahawks offensive line. That is going to be a problem they're really going to have to address. And then in the secondary, I mean, I like Shaquille Griffin. I like Trey Flack. Hours. Quandre Diggs are all fine, but they need that one big impact corner. And if I was Seattle, I think I would have targeted that position instead of going for a linebacker that besides, uh, you know, you have Bobby Wagner, you have KJ Wright, you have Shaquem Griffin, you brought in Bruce Irvin. Um, if I was Seattle, I definitely would have made a better effort addressing uh, a different position, not linebacker, because who knows if your first round pick Jordan Brooks is or is even going to be able to to step on the field at all. I do like what they did with their second and third round picks, though. I'll say that, bringing in Daryl Taylor, the defensive lineman from Tennessee. Once again, I don't necessarily know if it was a position that needed uh, to be upgraded that much. I love Jaron Reed as a defensive lineman as Seattle uh, decided to bring him back. And I totally understand that it's looking like Seattle's going to lose uh, Jadevian Clowney. So from that perspective, you're going to want to get uh, some pressure on the quarterback. Uh, they did end up going with an offensive lineman a little later than I would have expected. Number 69 overall, bringing in Damian Lewis from LSU. I think if things go right, he, he will start uh, either at right guard replacing Fluker or at left guard in for Ethan Posich, and maybe they'll move him uh, a little around. And they also bring in um, Kobe Parkinson, a tight end from Stanford. I didn't love this pick, not because of Parkinson, but I've actually said this on, sh on this show. Seattle low-key has one of the best three Tight, top three tight end combination in football. Greg Olson, um, Will Disley, who played really well in the first couple games of last season and ended up getting hurt, and Jacob Hollister, who basically did the same thing Disley did, except later in the season. And now you add in Colby Parkinson, a guy that I think was undervalued at pick number 133. I think that looks pretty good for Seattle. And they also bring in their second running back from the University of Miami within the last couple of years. Uh, they have Travis Homer on the team as well, the other Miami product who played with DJ Dallas. And um, besides Chris Carson who over the last couple of years has had a little bit of trouble staying healthy, and Rashad Penny. Seattle hasn't really been able to get uh, that big impact player at running back. I think DJ Dallas uh, does provide them with that. But with that being said, I'm going to give Seattle's draft a C-. minus. I just didn't love a lot of the things they did, especially with their first two picks. I just didn't think linebacker was necessarily a need, especially when you look at Jordan Brooks. I think he's a solid player, but not really worth where he was drafted. So I'm going to give Seattle's draft a C-. minus.